What's up, y'all deets? Here today is awesome. We got some nice pheasant that somebody shot and cleaned for me. So we're gonna stuff that with some mushrooms and onions and put a white wine cream mushroom sauce on top. Sounds delicious. Let's get cooking. First, we're making a mushroom stock that will go into our sauce. Heat up some olive oil in a pot and toss in some onions, carrots, a leek, and a couple cloves of garlic. Once softened, cover those ingredients with water. Next, we're adding two ounces of dried shiitake mushrooms. Folks, these are amazing. And also, we're adding some thyme, bay leaves, whole peppercorns, and salt. Make sure those flavors are all touching the water and simmer for around two to two and a half hours. Strain out the vegetables, but don't throw them away. Even though it was pretty painful, I recommend squeezing the liquids out of your vegetables. Maybe just find a better way to do it. So for the actual sauce, we're starting with some olive oil and softening up a shallot. Add your mushroom stock and for real, this stuff slaps. It is exponentially better than the stuff you will buy at the store. Add a hefty gulp of white wine and some heavy cream as well. Let that simmer and add a sprig of thyme. Remove your sprig of thyme and whisk in a mix of cornstarch and water to thicken. For some extra color to our dish, we're adding spinach to our sauce. Add this in batches until you reach your desired spinach levels. So before any of that actually happens, you should start brining your pheasant. My brine is just water with salt and some garlic powder. Our pheasant will sit in this liquid for about four hours. Pat dry these after they're brined so we can get a good sear on them later. These are pretty small, so to make them easier to stuff, we're going to beat them like you beat your younger brother at Madden. But what to fill them with, you may ask. How about some mushrooms and onions, is my response. Let's throw a garlic clove in there for fun, too. Salt, some white wine, and thyme as well. When that wine is evaporated, your fillings are done. We're taking a hefty pinch of our mushrooms and onions and placing them on our pheasant. A trick with butcher's twine is to lay your strands out and then place your meat on top. Tie those just tight enough to enclose your fillings. By the way, this recipe is pretty interchangeable with chicken, so if you or someone you know did not kill a bird, just use that. Hit these with some salt and pepper, then sear in a pan. Once they have some color on them, they're going into a 350 degree oven until they reach 165 degrees Fahrenheit. And just look at that amazing color on them. Snip snap your butcher's twine, ain't nobody trying to eat that, and ladle your sauce over and this is just awesome. Right, so here's our stuffed pheasant. I mean, it smells so good. I am, I am ready, let's get at this. I mean, this is incredible. Ah, ah. It's incredible. Like this, like this is a great example of why you layer flavors, why every step of cooking you add seasoning. Because at the end, it all comes together. Even if you're adding the same seasoning throughout it, it all comes together. This is spectacular. I mean like the pheasant is juicy because we brined it. You know, and, and the sauce has so much flavor to it. And you know, it's got that little bit of a crispy uh, texture from searing it. And then you got the onions, the height. This is unbelievable. And I am not making that up. This is insanely fantastic. And if you have it, if you have pheasant, I'd say give this a try. It's pretty labor intensive, but I don't care. This is worth it. 100% all that work comes in to this little dish and it is wonderful. But thank you so much for watching Deet Seats and we'll see you next time. Hey, if you liked this video, hit that like button. Leave me a comment. I would love to hear from you. We're going to have more content as time goes on. But we thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.